Cross a gypsy's palm with silver and learn your future. I've got loads of, look at that. I mean, compared with yours, I've got millions of tiny little men. Exciting What's that one? What's things going to happen. Try the call, blimey. As it was, and see if it works. All right. <laughs> We went on tour. That was really good fun. It's the nearest I'm going to ever get to be an actor because Mum's not going to sponsor me for Rod. someone else's show or working on the ticket stalls or selling t-shirts or you know, there's always something to do. Never mind. Well, I was trying to get through the door, he said, no, no, you can't go on until the prologue and I said, I'm doing the prologue. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so they loved it last night. Could be met with a burst of spontaneous indifference tonight. Because it comes out of my apron, and it, my, all the buttons well, open. <laughs> because it's not long enough. It's just great fun being with everyone, and you're on such a high all the time. It's horrible to go that high. It really is awful. Cover it up. It's number. Oh, I don't know. It's dark. But you don't get much free time. I mean, working up to twelve o'clock and then getting up at seven in the morning. It's a hard. It's really hard. No, that's gypsy. But that's really dark. I've never spent so much time absolutely frightened <laughs> than I do for these three weeks in Edinburgh. I'm frightened about 80% of my time here. Anybody behind this thing? The Edinburgh Festival, 1982. Children's Music Theatre is appearing on the festival fringe for the seventh year in succession. For the four weeks they're here, everyone is under pressure. While the stage crew are setting up for the evening performance of Bendigo Boswell, the cast are already in their costumes and makeup and out in the street publicising the evening performance. In their seven years on the fringe, Children's Music Theatre, or CMT for short, has won seven awards. Previous productions have also been seen in London, at the National Theatre, the Young Vic, the Shaftesbury and the Janetta Cochrane. They've toured the west of England and appeared on television. The two shows they're giving in Edinburgh this year are a revival of their 1930s style jazz musical, Tin Pan Alley, and their current new production, Bendigo Boswell. They'll put on more than a dozen performances of each in 18 days, and that involves a company of 100 children and 50 adults to be housed and fed and generally provided for. <laughs> It also means a strenuous daily schedule of rehearsals, performances and publicity stunts and regular gingering up sessions to keep everyone on their toes. The first act went with a real swing. I think those, the cut, cuts that we made and the additions that we made worked very well and most of it I think is okay. The second act missed out somewhere along the line. It just wasn't quite there and that's funny. The founder the and artistic part. director of CMT and also co-author and director of Bendigo Boswell is Jeremy James Taylor. 
A lot of people say, where is the GM children's music theatre based? And there isn't an answer to that because we're a kind of nomadic company that only work in the school holidays. But if we do have a home, it's Edinburgh. The thing I'm frightened about as the director of the company is that for six years we've been coming up here and we haven't had a flop yet. And we've got to keep surprising people. There's a limit as to just how much energy you can pour into things, that, you know, and, 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 and the, the fun will run out or it's possible to do that. So we have to keep our standards as high as possible. There's a corner of the country where you can do an honest job For a month of English summer you can earn an honest job When the streets of London empty you may wonder where they went When the world becomes a garden in the fields of The making of Bendigo Boswell started in September 1981, some months before the play was actually written, when 200 children turned up for first auditions. The boys were from Arundel School near Peterborough, where the production was based and the first performances were to be given. The girls came from five schools within the same area. We're looking for about 25 people to be in this show, which we are going to spend the next six months working on and writing and putting together. Now, we start by finding the people we want to be in it, then we uh, improvise around the story and just sort of research it and talk about the whole world of gypsies and the sort of things that they do. And when we've got that organised and got the characters and a basic story organised with that group of people, then we write it. Before then, we want to get a group of people together with whom we can do all that work. Now, obviously, those people need to be fairly outgoing, can make lots of noise, aren't afraid of making mistakes, aren't afraid of making idiots of themselves, uh, and can be as, as, as noisy and as rude and as crude as possible. And today is your chance. Bristol Rovers are oh, magic! They're, they're rubbish! Oh, crap! Who won the cup last season, then? We did! Come on. Oh, yeah. Start moving your arms as well. In groups of 20, for an hour each, Jeremy James Taylor and composer Peter Allwood put them through a variety of experiences, singing, moving, improvising, to see who could develop those particular qualities of forthrightness and personal projection that are the trademark of CMT performers. Ladies and gentlemen, Claire Bonin. Luke, I think we should have hot ice cream for those cold days. Although it's called children's music theatre, it's exuberance rather than quality in music that's being looked for at this stage. One, two, three, I'm gonna make it. verse at the beginning, right, shall we? The Lord looked down. Ready? Two, three. The Lord looked down, the heaven made his sound. You must be able to gather why I've chosen this song. It's got so many words in it. The Lord looked down on the earth and it made him sad. Right? Hey, let's get it. Oh, Jay, you lay off. Oh, Bendigo says The story of Bendigo Boswell is about a gypsy family, the Boswells, and the Harrises, a family from the east end of London, who all meet up at a hop farm in Kent in about 1910. Bendigo Boswell is one of the gypsy boys, a dark character, obsessed by Romany customs and rituals. He's deeply disturbed because his mother has just died, and there has been no time to carry out the ritual burning of all her possessions, and so put her soul to rest. She's dead, and that's that. She's not dead. Oh, I've seen her, have you? All around, I hear her crying. A restless spirit. <laughs> May you drown. Now calm yourself, Ben. How can I when I know we didn't do right by her? When she died, we should have burnt everything that was here. And then her poor spirit would have been left at rest. You taught us that, Boswell. Now look here, Ben. We have to get here for the hops. When Bendigo meets Anna, one of the London children, she becomes identified in his mind with his mother. Anna? How do you 
you know my name? I know everything. Tell me fortune then. Your hair is the same colour as my mother's. Black. Raven. Your mother's? She died last week. Uh, I'd I better go now, or I'll get lost. Yes. And so, Bendigo unwittingly sets off a train Bendigo of events says... that in the end he won't be able to control. Jeremy James Taylor and his co-author David Scott are asking their young cast to give convincing performances as Romany characters and act out the lifestyle of hop pickers of 70 years ago. So the characterful old CMT coach was brought out for what sadly proved to be one of its last journeys, a day trip to Kent for some first-hand research during the hop picking season. When I discovered that uh, a very good friend of my family owned a huge hop farm down in Kent, it seemed too good an opportunity to miss, and so we got the bus out and we put them all in there and took them down there for the day, and they met the very people who they are now going to portray. Shilling. Oh, Seven. Seven. Oh, I see. Put the bushel in <laughs> Nowadays, machines pick the hops, but there are still people living in Kent who remember the old ways. Yes. Yes. In a the boss tells them to squeeze them a bit, so he gets more in. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you'd picked your hops, you had to clean them, as they called it, and you picked out the leaves. <laughs> if he'd had a pint, you used to take him a bit heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you used to give him a pint, <laughs> so he'd take him light. <laughs> yes, they used to be up all the trees. It's like it was yesterday, isn't it? It is. I never thought I'd do this again. Yeah. It's lovely. <laughs> Who did I? Just for an hour. <laughs> it's lovely. Oh, well. Did you do it at the time, though? No, because my aunt used to stand there and she used to nag. <laughs> <laughs> my mother was all right, but my aunt made me pick so many umbrella falls a day. How many? What umbrella falls? Umbrellas. We used, umbrella. As Anything. children, we used to Give stick children an umbrella anything in the ground and in. you had to fill that about 22, 24 times. You've got to pick and clean and not too many leaves in the bin. You can get away with some, though. Those things up a bit. No, nah, not too many, son. Got to think about the quality of father's beer. <laughs> father's joke there, yeah. a little laugh. Yeah. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. That's right. We've got to fill this great thing up, Mark. Now, it, you know, it is big. It's going to be bigger than this. And I mean, the thought of filling that thing up, you know, is horrific. All right? And then there are the umbrellas. You've got to move jolly fast to get over there. Small. It's the smallest one. It is you, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Again? We got to fill this great thing up, Ma. Eventually. Oh, I want a brolly full from each of you before breakfast, right? My smallest brolly. Okay, that's how you fight. Can you give us the words again of that song? I can't remember the song. Topping is all over. Sorry? Topping is all over. Oh, no, we don't see that until the end. You don't see that. The money's all spent. Don't I wish I never I wish I never went hopping. Hopping down in Kent. So, old lady. <laughs> sitting on the fence. T I O T I O T I E I O. They say hopping's lousy, and I don't believe it's true. For when I go down hopping, I earn a bob or two. When it's T I O T I O T I O. -T -I -O. <laughs> I haven't had anything to drink either. <laughs> At hop picking time, if you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine compartments, and those compartments were dissected off, and wood put in front of them, uh, special framing, and a door to each, mm. and they were really made <coughs> ex, uh, in a very nice way for their accommodation for hop picking. And at the end, you see the cookhouse. And in this yard, they used to have their campfires, 
and a happy little family came in here, or rather ten families, but they made sure that they were pretty selective and they didn't want to have anybody in this area who they weren't so keen on. So it was quite a selected area. I got two daughters married to farmer's son and they called it in once a year when they come down off. In 1910, when Bendigo Boswell is set, Mrs Simpson was in her 20s. Could you give us a sample of one of your songs? One of my songs? What do you want? Well, any anyway, the hot anyway, anyway, for the hot one. Well, here's one you can date. Tell the air of six a shilling. How can a poor girl get a living? From morning to night she is willing. Down in the green gardens of Kent we went. Early in the morning comes Bridgeland, oh, he is it. Get up, you dirty old crawlers. <laughs> into the bin goes his maulers. Down into Green Gardens of Kent. We went. <laughs> 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 They tell you the of six a shilling. Don't perform it, don't perform it. How can a poor girl get a living? Listen to her, Philip, this is nice, you know. From morning to night she is willing. Like it when Mum sings. Al now, a very interesting girl, Alice Wright, when we were originally talking about Doris Harris, Cockney mum, big family, comes down hopping, you think of a big strapping lady, you know, who's salt of the earth and can, with one clout, can fell the entire family. However, Alice suddenly emerged in auditions the other day. She's a slight girl, she's not very big, but my word is she strong. And so I think that she's going to be playing Doris. We'll find out in the next two or three weeks as, as we really go into it. And if she does, I reckon we will have had to rethink the entire character as we thought it as writers. It'll, I hope, work very well. A completely different sort of person than that than, than, than what we originally think about. And that's very exciting when that happens, that you are forced to rethink by a child who gives you something you weren't expecting. Hopping is all over, money is all spent. Charlie, don't put your stuff in the flipping bottle. What is it, anyway, Mum? Don't you never listen? It's diarrhoea mixture, idiot, for diarrhoea. Who needs a mixture? Got it last Christmas by myself. Yeah. Scrappy falling apples and pears is not only stealing, we can also give you the run, something dreadful. And similarly, we're about to go meet some, some of the gypsy community around here, from whom they can get much more than just the facts. They actually will see those people and meet them and realise what kind of intense people they are and what extraordinary and, and a unique atmosphere that one has. How do most people from this site earn their money? Well, it varies. The, uh... Unfortunately, quite a few are out of work, but when they use what seasonal work going, they do fruit picking, tasty picking, scrap metal. The scrap metal is down a bit. It's only now making some sort of a recovery. <coughs> and this is a tendency from about 12 onwards they want to work. Like where you children are at school now, our children want to be out earning a living and, and making their way in life. They, they don't put the same importance on education. You never went? You I did go, but... She, she won't settle in school. She's 14 now, aren't you? 15. 15. So you stopped going to school now? She stopped going yeah. to school. You never started, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're trying to find work? Does a bit of everything. Mm. Are there many gypsies who still go around sort of doing things like fortune telling and... Yeah, Dukkar and you mean, and Durakin, yeah. Mm. I mean, this is passed on normally from mother to daughter uh, for a family, you know. Basically, a lot of it is quite true, especially when you get the right person, the old, the old gypsy people, or the old breed of the black ones, you know, black faced ones. I'm going in. Be careful, Anna. I'm going in. Wait there, Paul. Come on in, lovey. It's the week before the London family, the Harrises, go hop picking, and Anna is having her fortune told at Stepney Fair. Cross a gypsy's palm with silver, and learn your future. Sit down, lovey. There's me palm. Now, where's your silver? Good girl. Now let's see your hand. My, my. You ain't got no common hand. Dordy, dordy. Well now, our journey here, clear as day. 
going on a journey, eh? With your family or friends? Going up in Dan and Ken next week. Oh, I'm telling you the truth now, ain't I, dear? Let's have another look. Oh, silver I can see. Fine silver. Firelight and candles clear as day. Such beautiful silver. Oh, a beautiful dress. A red one, red as fire. And a fine young man too. You understands what I means, me warning. Ooh, and bells. Beautiful bells, clear as moonlight. Lolly! Lolly! I'm coming to swim! Can I go now? That's no common hand. Is that all? Tis enough. Come on, Anna! May God bless you, my dear. The old Romany caravans are seldom seen these days. A model of this one was made specially for Bendigo Boswell, as were the costumes, beautifully recreating the period atmosphere of 1910. This is the third CMT show to have costumes by the distinguished opera and theatre costume designer, Alex Stone. The van itself was made under the guidance of designer Christopher Richardson, whose previous work has included settings for Max Wall and Rowan Atkinson. Bendigo needs a setting that allows fast scene changes between the gypsy campsite, the hop fields and an entertainment tent. So that we can see a change going on, right? Somebody, there's a curtain which comes along that front row, somebody walks behind it and the curtain goes across and there they are revealed. And then when they go off, off they go. Same you could thing. even bring someone else on from behind them on the other yes. side and, and yes. leave someone else yes. there. And the, so these doings coming across on angles too, it will now you all collapse, you watch. Yes. Yes. As right. my tender hand do comes. The same thing. Yeah, on tent. All right. Three, four. Hopping is a party. Hopping is a ball. No teasing party. Hopping is a party. Hopping is a ball. Right. Three, four. Hopping is a party. Hopping is a ball. The music for Bendigo Boswell is being composed and arranged by Peter Allwood. A show like this, when you put it on stage, has got to have good, strong, rousing songs. There's going to be a lot of that. There are a lot of um, boys and girls on the stage and I want, I want some really good stuff for them all to sing, all to get involved in. Can you give us a gobstopper, mister? No, but I'll give you a B flat. Pure little fellas, see? No! 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 No!
whole thing builds up with all kinds of interwoven scenes between the locals and uh, everyone fancying each other. Lots of kind of the hopper marriages, the hopper wedding ceremonies that used to go on, which were mock weddings, of which kind of make a mockery to of Benigo's seriousness about this girl who reminds him of his mother. The climax of the story comes during a bank holiday concert party, when Suplista, one of the gypsy girls, is dancing for the assembled hoppers. At the same time, Bendigo is going through a form of marriage with Anna on the anniversary of his own mother's wedding. Dominic! Nathaniel! God! There is an accident with the candles, and the van is, in the end, burned. But, by a dreadful irony, Anna dies in the fire. It's a very delicate and difficult play, I believe, to Bendigo Boswell, as opposed to many of the others that we've done, which are rip-roaring, noisy, vital, energetic pieces. It's a more of a kind of chamber, piece of chamber music than a, than a great symphony is Bendigo. And the kind of delicate quality of it that we require the quite young people to, to, to put over requires a bit of getting into, a bit of getting used to. Following the Arundel performances, there was a tour of the West Country, a week at the Young Vic in London, and now Bendigo Boswell has come to Edinburgh. Meanwhile, there has been some rewriting and some cast changes. With the Bendigo cast, we've had to recast eight or nine, I think, to come to Edinburgh. In particular, the leading role. We've cast an actor up here to play the piece who has done some sterling work with the company before. We know and, and trust in his qualities. I think a lot of the character should be inside the mind. You know, it's not all movements and words. A lot of it is just thinking and expression with the eyes. So that's what I'm aiming at and I hope I'm getting somewhere towards that. No one ever looks at anything for long enough. It takes a long time for secrets to travel. Look at me. You see what I mean? Try again. I think she's a good character to play. I mean, it's quite a hard part. You have to keep coming off and on again. Um, especially last night when someone ran right straight into me and dropped everything all over the floor. But um, I like playing her. I think she's a good part. I think she's a bit like me. Well, I play Polly Harris, and she's really the... protects Anna, who's running after Bendigo all the time. And she's very... She's deeply concerned because the way her father may react and everything. And 
I feel she's she's one of the most she's more sober than the rest of the cast and I play her serious and as if she really cares about Anna. Bendigo says she should never say sorry. Anna's mother died and she was like a wax doll and I think I like him. Oh Anna! Be careful! Beat hedgehogs! Neil Cook, who plays Anna and Polly's father, is almost unrecognisable as the belligerent extrovert Alfred Harris. Well, he's just a loud, very rude, drunk, old cockney, basically. Um, there's not a lot of, of stuff in there. It's, it's mostly a caricature type thing. But he's basically just loud and rude. Come on, come on, let's get this stuff inside. I need a drink. Honestly, Alfred, you've got no poetry in you. Poetry? I said bloody hope not. Doris Harris, she's a cockney mother. She's very loud and she's always organising everyone. And um, her and her husband really are fairly alike. They're very, very boisterous and noisy because they're used to being in London, you know, where you have to be loud to stick up for yourself. I come from uh, South London in near Camberwell, the elephant ran, elephant and castle ran that way. There's those what thinks we're common, there's them what thinks we love, but their opinion you mustn't trust. I play Jimmy Harris, it's the Cockney London boy, the youngest one. Well, not the youngest one, the youngest boy, I should think, and it's a good part for me, cos I speak the way anyway, and I can do it quite well. We've got a 500-seater theatre, and uh, if we were able to fill it, we would be the luckiest company in the world. But to, to play to 300 is marvellous, but there's always the possibility to play to 500. The following night, Tin Pan Alley had a full house, and within a few days, Bendigo Boswell also sold out. For most of the children who act, stage manage, organise props or shift scenery, it's the most extraordinary summer holiday they've ever had. I know myself as a person now more than I did because I had to be another character and so I had to change myself. And it was also very interesting learning about everything in the theatre because I didn't know a thing before really. Well, I don't know about the acting because I mean, it's so hard to get into anywhere, and I mean, the people are so false behind what they are, and they're acting, and there was drug, drugs and drink and all that, and I don't like it at all. But if I did, if I did get into the acting world, I, would, I hope, I would hope I won't be like that at all. I would like to be in the theatre, but it's it's really tough, and, the, and it's the standard's very, very high, and I don't think I'll make it, but I'd like to think I could. I'd like to think I'd be up there. The whole experience of being up here is fantastic. You know, it's just the whole world seems to be in Edinburgh, and um, there's always something going on. I just like doing it. It's great fun. You meet people, and... You get to know people and it's good working in the theatre. I really like 